And you just heard from Trump campaign national spokeswoman Katrina Pearson. And with us now is CBSN political contributor and Republican strategist Leslie Sanchez and CBSN political contributor and Democratic strategist Liz Smith. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Thank you. I want to go around the horn here and ask you both, what are you guys looking forward to seeing tonight? I really want to see the approach that Donald Trump takes in terms of explaining some of his issues, particularly as it relates to national security. I think you will see a softening side of Trump as it relates to women, his daughter, his family, some of the things he's done in his business that were more inclusive. It's been a, a soft spot, a weak spot throughout his campaign that I think his campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, has tried to close that delta. And it's going to be interesting what approach he takes to do that. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think everyone, the number one thing everyone wants to see, myself included, is what Donald Trump shows up tonight. Um, but I am also curious to see how Hillary Clinton has prepared to deal with Donald Trump, whether it's the, you know, calm Donald Trump or whether it's the, you know, Donald Trump that's more prone to personal insults. And I think it will be interesting to see how she approaches him um, when it comes to attacks. You know, she's someone who's really, really strong in debates, but she's best, you know, when she's, when her demeanor is a little calmer and when she lays out the facts, you know, in a more um, matter of fact uh, way versus, you know, getting angry, attacking her opponent. So but it's hard. It's 90 minutes. It There's is. no teleprompter. It's raw. Right. The real whoever you are comes out in right. 90 minutes. You can't be that great and, for that. And in that format, I think it's a format that benefits her for sure. And look, you were talking about this earlier. Um, in the primaries, Donald Trump at most in his debates was talking about 20 minutes at a time. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, was spending about 45 minutes up there talking. So she, we know that she has the salmon. We know that she's got the ability to do this. Um, I just think seeing the interpersonal dynamics will be the most interesting thing of the night. I want to ask you, ladies, do you feel as a Democrat and a Republican that uh, the press and the media have covered the candidates differently in the sense that uh, we've talked a lot about the Clinton Foundation. Uh, there were some irregularities with uh, how they conducted business, specifically with some people who may have been uh, contributing to the foundation, but also meeting with Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State. But when you look at some of the things that are coming out now about the Trump Foundation, which hasn't garnered as much attention as what Donald Trump is tweeting, do you think that there's been a difference in the coverage? Liz, I'll start with you first. Um, you know what? I actually don't, um, you know, and I, I know, and I differ with a lot of Democrats on this, and I think it's been unwise on the part of a lot of Democrats, and unwise on the Clinton campaign, um, Clinton campaign's part, frankly, to blame everything on the media. This is the reality. It's not the media that has double standards for Donald Trump, it's the voters. Mm -hmm. And I think the sooner we realize that- the voters have the double Yeah, standard. they do. And they hold him to a lower standard because he's not a career politician. He's someone who has built his brand on being this kind of buffoonish character. And look, I'm not saying it's fair, but we gotta deal with the cards that we've been dealt. And that's the reality, voters hold him to a lower standard. And so I think putting at the media's feet isn't exactly, you know, isn't actually exactly on point. Leslie? I think the, the distinct difference was for Hillary Clinton, it, it, we're, there was an expectation that she knew better. She exercised poor judgment repeatedly, that it was a consistent pattern for 25 years, whether it was the Rose Law Firm, the federal investigation for the email, now you've got the Clinton Foundation, you, you know better. Donald Trump, that expectation very much lives yeah. is not there. He's boorish. He fights in the boardroom. He'll do, get the best deal he can. He'll pay the small amount of taxes that he can. He'll get the smallest uh, low income wages that he can for any employee in his organization. He only does what he has to do by federal law. I mean, he, he basically has worked the system to build an empire. Some people really gravitate toward that. They want that kind of sharp elbow approach to make America great again. Not to use his campaign slogan, but they do fear. And what's interesting is the people that fear, who are these people that fear? The nine to 12 million people that may turn out this election cycle that do not turn out, except when they feel the, the country's in trouble. We call them floating voters. We saw it in 1992, whether you can't deny the Ross Perot and the 19 plus million that he got. What it does do is it transforms and breaks up up the system and, and none of us, are, meaning the parties, are going to look the same again. So I do think with that lens, are you going to hold Donald Trump accountable if he can't remember, uh, you know, all the nuanced details that Hillary Clinton can? No, it is a double standard, right. but you're not going to be looking for him to pres as president because of that criteria. Leslie, you talk about campaign slogans. One of the things that Donald Trump has done effectively, make America great again. Bill Clinton had hope and change. It's right. about the economy. 
Hillary Clinton doesn't really have a campaign slogan. Does that hurt her? Right. It, part of it is the authentic factor, right? You had hope and change because Barack Obama exemplified that. It was part of a generational shift. It was transcending what politics was, was in terms of generationally, but also race. And, and there were so many dynamics of where he was going to take the country. It was a very difficult thing to run against. And it was an open seat election, right? Like you're seeing this time around. Hillary Clinton is the same thing over and over again. It's really running for a third term. So it's hard to say, let's just keep the trains going. You know, the question she comes back to Ronald Reagan in the debate. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? But Liz, you know, yeah. he has a 58% approval rating. He's doing really well in the polls. That this hasn't been the case for previous presidents in the same situation. Yeah. Um, well, first, I just want to go back to your your uh, question about you know the logo or slogan or whatever it is. Um, is the other night I was doing a panel at Georgetown, and I, on the way there, I called up a few of my friends who are politically active, um, don't work in politics, and I asked them two questions. One, one, tell me, what does Donald Trump stand for? And they'd say, make America great again. Two, tell me what Hillary Clinton stands for. And they'd say, uh, Three different uh, answers. No, uh, she's Hillary Clinton. And I think that is a big problem, that people think that she is just running kind of to further the Clinton brand. And she hasn't really latched on to any animating issue or theme for her is campaign. Is it too late, Liz, at this point, to rebrand herself no, and I, have a new slogan? I, look, I don't think she needs to rebrand herself. <laughs> I, and I don't think she can. Um, but to your point, I do think that she can let herself on to a very popular outgoing president and say, look, I I am going to bring big, bold policies to build on his legacy. And I think that would be a smart way for her to talk, you know, tonight at the debate and going forward. And we saw that a little bit at the convention. And I think that's a, that would be a really good way to activate the Obama coalition that's kind of sitting on their hands right now. She, she's really, it's an interesting point to make because it's basically saying I'm running the third term of the Obama administration versus the second term of the Clinton administration, which was initially where she was going to go with this. But because of the favorabilities of yeah. Barack Obama, she's she shifted that way. But tr historically, not that his history means anything, that's not going to be rewarded in this country. Glad we need a slogan for our show, my friend. I think we need it. Ours is confidence. Confidence. <laughs> One word. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Sanchez and Liz Smith, always great to have you. Thanks so much, guys. Appreciate it.